So we've had Carrie Prejean and Brett, uh, Britt Mayer coming on. We've been talking about their efforts as these two sort of mom warriors to fight back against the overreaches by the very activist trans community, right? Very activist. And in sort of taking over women's spaces. And um, these two, they don't care what they get called. They show up and they say, no, hard pass. And they do get called a lot of names, but it's not about them. It's about this 17-year-old girl who came out and uh, her name is Rebecca Phillips. And she showed up at the Santee City Council meeting to say, I'm 17 and I was at the Y and I saw a naked male and I object. I object to having been put through that. I object to the thought of my five-year-old little sister potentially having to deal with that. And I will say this. She didn't say she saw a naked penis. Sorry to drop the P word in the first three minutes of the show. But she said she saw a naked male just to take a walk down memories lane. Here's what she said in part. Rebecca Phillips sought six. As I was showering after my workout, I saw a naked male in the women's locker room. I immediately went back into the shower, terrified, and hid behind their flimsy excuse for a curtain until he was gone. So the why has to allow people like a trans woman to use the women's bathroom because California state law says they must. Um, they, it's, it's a law out there. The why wasn't particularly apologetic either. Well, now the person who says that she is the trans woman that was seen by Rebecca has come forward. And I don't know whether that's true or not, but I know this person has a history at this why of being a biological male, but going in and using the women's locker room and doing protests and having all sorts of commotion around the fact that this was this, was this person's preference. This person goes by Kristen Wood now. Uh, Kristen is 66 years old. Six years ago, she was a man. She was living as a biological man. She wasn't transitioned. So six years ago, it was very clear this person would have had to use the male facility. Now, Kristen Wood says she has transitioned. As recently as December 2021, she definitely had not had sex reassignment surgery on her penis. All right, this her, her penis. I mean, this is the bizarre world in which we're now living. Um, but now she claims she has, stay with me, and she's very, very angry at Rebecca Phillips. Um, she came out and spoke in uh, to a local publication saying the following. Here's uh, Sat 4. People, entire families were coming up to get their picture taken and to introduce me to their children. It's important that they finally get to hear the truth and they finally get to put a face on this scary transgender woman who was misgendered. All right, so that's obviously a biological man. There's, it wouldn't take much to figure that out, as Rebecca Phillips did. So here's the twist of the story. Kristen Wood is defending Kristen Wood's behavior by saying, I had sex reassignment surgery, and where would you have me go? I went to the women's room because I am a woman. It's separate and apart from California law. I am, and you're a bigot if you object. Well, it's not just Carrie Prejean and Britt Mayer who object. Uh, but they're two of the women who showed up at the meeting uh, last night. I think it was city council meeting. That's where Rebecca first uh, stood up to object. And here's, you know what? I should play this longer sound bite from Kristen Wood before I let the ladies respond. Here's a longer sound bite by Kristen uh, in her defense. Okay, sat one. On the morning of Thursday, December 12th, my aqua sister Vicky called to say, Chrissy, I'm so sorry about what happened last night in Sam T. I replied, well, what happened? Her answer was, oh my God, you don't know, do you? Let me send you the Instagram video. I watch it and I collapsed in tears. I'm here to spread the light of truth in the face of these inaccuracies. I'm a mom, a grandmom. Now please look at me. Listen to the sound of my voice. I am a threat to no one. In the year I've been a member of the Y, children have attended summer camp and have been with their parents and grandparents in the women's locker room with me, and there has never, ever been an incident, ever, not until one was manufactured using this forum to do so. I am fully transitioned, as can be confirmed at my doctorate Sharps, who is also my gynecologist. I am sorry oh, that boy. this forum was previously used to spread lies and a hateful political agenda. God's bless you all for this opportunity. Uh, Kristen wants us to believe that Kristen needs a, a gynecologist, 
even if you've had sex transition surgery, you don't have an actual vagina, okay? You don't have a female reproductive system. You don't have anywhere near the actual worries of an actual woman when it comes to what goes on down south in Rio. That's the truth, all right? Yeah. Looking at three moms here who have had babies in the not too distant past. Um, my last one was nine years ago, but I just, like, can we not pretend that a gynecologist is behaving toward Kristen the way a gynecologist actually must to maintain one's medical license? What they do is create a hole. That's what they do. They create a hole in what the area that used to have a penis, and they want to declare, declare that a vagina, which it isn't. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. That's me, but whatever. I'm so, leading. Are you, I'm going to give you the floor in one second. I'm just it's a long setup for the story. Carrie, Britt, others go to say, what the hell's happening here? And they don't accept uh, Kristen's protestations that Kristen belongs in the female locker room. I'll give you a sampling of what they said. Here's Carrie Sattu. I'm identifying tonight as Christy Lynn Wood, so I have three minutes. This is a war on women, children, and the truth, capital T. And the enemy is disguised in high heels, lipstick, and a shaved beard. Cultural appropriation is wrong, and gender appropriation is wrong. And I, my job is to protect my children. And that's why I'm here. This is not about equality. This is about complete domination and superiority. We're not going to accept this. There is no such thing as a trans transitioning gender. That is a made up fantasy. It doesn't matter if you chop your penis off. It doesn't make you a woman. It doesn't make you a woman. It makes you unwell. We want, we are not gonna bow down to your gender ideology cult. Well, here's what needs to happen tonight. You guys, while you still have your balls, do something about it. We need protection for the little Rebecca. Stop. I stop. get more time. No. Your time is up. Stop. Stop. The microphone is turned off. Nobody's hearing you. Oh, boy. And here's the last piece of it, which is Britt getting up. And by the way, these two have come on the show and they, they according to what, I don't know if we got this directly or if we heard them responding in written form, they were subjected to such harassment they had to be um, escorted out by the sheriff's department because the place was filled with trans activists who, honestly, you should distinguish from trans people because the activists are just in a class, a special class of angry, um, not to be confused with the trans community uh, writ large. Yeah, they told us that. Okay, here's Britt. This radical new reworked language to force everyone to play by the rules of an ideology that is based on feelings rather than biology and truth is unsustainable and it's dangerous. If everyone can be a woman, then no one is a woman. I pulled up and the vice mayor spot was open. If I identify as vice mayor and maybe even get a, get a tattoo that says vice mayor and hand out business cards as vice mayor, am I legally vice mayor and am I al allowed now to the table? Can I yell discrimination if you don't play by my rules? The logical conclusion of policies that are catered to ideologies that are not based in any truth is utter and complete chaos. We are asking you to step in and to put forward an ordinance that will protect women and girls. Play the hero. We're at the tipping point in society. Mm, okay, I'm done. And uh, I would love to get your thoughts on all of this, ladies. Uh, Bethany, you were trying to jump in a second ago. I'll start with you. Yeah, so I, I just have sort of a technical question. So this person is asserting that they have been fully transitioned medically. If that's the case, then how did a 17-year-old girl recognize that this was a biological male? I hmm. presume that she wasn't that close to this person's genitalia. So obviously, it's obvious enough from afar, from across the room, that there's something there that shouldn't be there when you're a biological woman. So this this sort of presumption that this is a full transition and this person has a gynecologist, I'm I'm going to I'm going to call BS on. I mm -hmm. I don't believe it's true. Mhm. Mm I know because we know from the earlier reports cuz she's been causing trouble at this YMCA. Um she was not transitioned as of December 2021. So, you know, that's a, a year plus ago. Doesn't mean it couldn't have happened in the last year, but it, it would have been awfully recent. And by the way, I don't know if it matters, MK, because this girl never claimed she saw male genitalia. Right. She said, I saw a naked male. I think I would recognize that Kristen was, an, was a male, was a biological male, if I saw Kristen from behind as well. 
Well, so your question earlier was, do we have to pretend about the gynecologist? And the answer is, yes, we are. The demand is that we pretend. Uh, and the demand is that you do not object in any way, shape or form. And that is not something that is acceptable to me. This young woman is a minor who was in this setting, saw something that made her uncomfortable and made her wonder about the safety of this locker room. She is allowed to have those concerns. It is crazy town to tell her she's not allowed to. And the way this is being covered is just insane. Uh, there's a headline, I believe it was Daily Beast, that called it her gym freakout. A 17-year-old's gym freakout. It's like, well, maybe we should respect the fact that she's a little concerned about this and that 17-year-old girls maybe should be protected in some way uh, and should listen to their guts on things like this. Another uh, PBS headline out of San Diego, protests over use of Sandy YMCA locker room by trans woman, part of a troubling national trend. Is that the national trend where we care what our daughters are exposed to in locker rooms? Like I, I have three daughters. I would like them to be able to use their spidey sense to understand when something might be making them uncomfortable and not be ashamed to say it. And what this is, is a national trend toward making them ashamed that they are uncomfortable. And that is dangerous for them. Is your business still using spreadsheets and emails to manage important sales commission? Is your support and operations staff stretched too thin? Are your salespeople constantly trying to piece together the puzzle for what they're going to get paid on and what's potentially missing? Well, this is where ClearComp comes in. ClearComp is a one-stop shop for your business to manage sales commission documentation like commission plan info, product info, and facts. It's basically a sales operations and sales enablement dream platform. ClearComp works seamlessly and securely with your existing software applications for your billing CRM, HR. You get the picture. Your sales team will perform their best with real-time results and earnings using ClearComp's interactive dashboards and your operations team will be able to make commission plan adjustments with just a few clicks. So please get this done already, right? Get rid of this stressor. Modernize your sales organization. Improve your business today by visiting clearcomp.com. That's C-L-E-A-R-C-O-M-P.com. Book a demo and tell them I sent you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.